Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 14 of my real estate investment series. And in this episode, we are talking about why getting a loan from a bank has become more complicated in this COVID environment because of the appraisal, what it is about the appraisal that's causing an issue and how you can strengthen your offer despite this. So stay tuned, we're covering everything here. All right, welcome back guys. I am glad that you're here for another episode of my real estate investing series. If you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing. This is ultimately how YouTube knows what content is good, what content people are finding interesting, and it allows YouTube to recommend this content to other users. And ultimately my goal for this investing series is to get this free information out to as many people as possible. So you subscribing is so appreciated. Also, please make sure that you're following me on my other channels so you can stay in touch with what's going on. My Instagram handle is downtown native. My Facebook page is also downtown native. So please make sure that you are subscribed on all channels. Getting into today's video subject matter, I really wanted to make this video on this topic of the appraisal during this time when we are experiencing some more complications than usual in this COVID pandemic environment. So if you are negotiating on property at this time, this is a really relevant video for you, but it also is a principle that holds true no matter what the timing is. And this method that I'm going to describe to you of strengthening your offer is highly applicable in any scenario that you might be in where you need to beef up your offer and you don't just want to throw more money at the seller. So first, let's get the basics out of the way. What is the appraisal? Let's talk about what the appraisal is and how it affects the deal first. So the appraisal is only done when you are getting a mortgage on the property. The appraisal is something that is conducted by the bank. The appraisal is the bank's way of confirming that the price that you are purchasing the property for is actually what the property is worth. That is the market value of the property. The bank does not want to lend you more money than the property you're planning to purchase is worth. There's too much risk and exposure for the bank. Ultimately, if you were to fail to pay the bank and the bank ended up with your property, there would just be so much money owed and it wouldn't have equivalent value. So that's ultimately what the bank is protecting. They want to make sure that the amount of money that they're giving you towards the purchase is just a percentage of the overall value. And they want to make sure that they're correct on what that percentage is that they're giving you. So in order to conduct an appraisal, the bank sends a professional appraiser to the property to check it out, look at the size, look at the features, look at the condition, ultimately compare it against what's available in the neighborhood, what's sold in the neighborhood. And this appraiser comes up with a value which is considered the bank's opinion of the market value of the property. And this we call the appraised value. Now, how does the appraised value affect your deal? If you are getting a mortgage, there is a percent of the purchase price that you are planning on putting down in cash and the remainder of the purchase price is covered via financing, via a loan from the bank. For example, if you are buying a property priced at $1 million, I just am using a million dollars for this video because it is an even round number that's easy to calculate percentages off of. If you plan to put down 20% in cash and finance the remaining 80%, that means that you would be planning to put down 200,000 of your own dollars in cash and that the bank will be loaning you $800,000. That's also what we call a loan to value ratio of 80%. That means that the bank is planning on loaning you 80% of the purchase price. However, the bank is only willing to lend you 80% of the appraised value not whatever price you're willing to pay for the property. This means that if for some reason the property appraises for less than a million dollars, let's say $900,000, then the bank is going to be giving you 80% of the $900,000, not of the million dollars. This means that though you originally planned for the bank to give you $800,000 towards this purchase price, they're only actually going to give you $720,000. 
this is $80,000 less than what you need to complete the transaction. Because by the time the bank becomes a part of the transaction and does the appraisal process, you're already in contract. You've already agreed on a price with the seller and you've signed a contract. You already have a fully executed contract in place. So the question is, what happens when the bank is willing to give you less money than you need? Ultimately, if you want the property, you need to figure out how to come up with the balance owed in cash. Technically, if your contract has a mortgage contingency, and in this case, the bank is unable to lend you the full amount that you asked for, you technically can receive a declination letter from the bank and be allowed to walk away from this deal and get your contract deposit back. You also have the choice to come up with the cash balance yourself and still close on the property. This is what many people want to try to do. However, depending on how low the appraisal came in, this amount of money can be pretty significant and oftentimes it's difficult for someone to come up with that balance. You can try to renegotiate the purchase price with the seller and hope that they are willing to come down, accept less money, and this would keep the deal moving. But if the seller refuses to do that and you don't have the cash on hand to pay the balance, you need to see if the bank will be willing to lend more money towards the transaction than they originally planned to. This means that the bank's loan to value ratio will now end up being higher. The bank may not allow this. Depending on the structure of your loan, the bank may have a limit for how far they can push the amount that they're willing to loan compared to the appraised value of the property. Typically, the bank will only agree to a loan to value ratio higher than 80% for a highly qualified buyer. And a loan structured this way will often incur higher fees, maybe a higher interest rate, and overall a monthly payment that is higher, which may cause a buyer to rethink the entire deal. At the end of the day, all of these scenarios are pretty much a seller's worst nightmare because they derail the deal and they cause issues that could potentially kill the transaction altogether. A seller will do everything in their power to prevent this from happening. And I'm gonna share how those issues can be avoided in a minute. So on a side note, just in case realizing what the appraisal can actually do to your deal, in case that caused any like panic or anything, I do just wanna let you know that there are ways that we are able to work around a low appraisal. There are ways that we appeal low appraisals. We can provide the appraiser with comparables or rationale for why the property might have appeared like it's less valuable and we can try to get that appraisal up. In other cases, we can get a second opinion from maybe a different bank. So there are ways that we work on this if there is a low appraisal that happens. But for the purposes of this episode, we are discussing specifically how to deal with a low appraisal when that value is firm. So why are we talking about this now? How has COVID made this even more complicated. In certain areas, COVID has property values all over the place. Some people needed or wanted to sell very hastily. They wanted to get rid of their property as quickly as possible. And there were people who were willing to take a significant loss on their property. So if they sold for less than what they paid for it, or if they sold for way less than properties in the area were selling for right before COVID, they've now thrown off the comparables in the entire neighborhood for the most part. And it especially affects the value of all the other apartments within that same building. So because of this, when the bank analyzes the comps, they really are looking at a snapshot of what the market looks like at that given time. And they may come up with a lower appraisal amount because there are those properties that sold in distress because we are in a very unique situation right now. Even though this pandemic is a temporary situation that has caused people to make hasty decisions, it does have ripple effects when we analyze the comps. Banks also have become even more conservative with their appraisals simply because they're more hesitant to take on any additional risk during this questionable time. So for all of these reasons, it has become a little bit more common for these banks to come up with appraised values that are less than what we'd expect. Ultimately, the appraised value coming in lower than the contract price on the property. And since the buyer has already agreed to pay that contract price, 
we've got situations where people are trying to figure out what to do about it. And this has been a real issue. So it really requires more in-depth conversations with your real estate agent and with your lender, really as a team to make sure that you are ready for this to happen. What you'll do if this does happen, are there backup fees? Can the bank lend you more in the event that this occurs? And ultimately everybody needs to know how they are going to proceed if they are faced with this issue. So when does a low bank appraisal not put your financing in jeopardy? Ultimately, what type of buyer is most appealing to a seller right now, especially during this time? When a buyer is able to put down more than 20% in cash, they are much more appealing to a seller because a low appraisal is much less of a threat to the entire deal. So to explain this, I'll use that same $1 million property example. And in this case, let's assume that you are only planning on financing or taking a loan out for 60% of the purchase price. And you're going to put down 40% in cash, so $400,000. So in this example, the bank is loaning you $600,000 out of the $1 million purchase price. So your loan to value going into the deal is assumed to be 60%. When the appraisal comes in at 900,000, let's say you still really wanna pursue the purchase of the property because you believe in the long-term value of the property. Since the appraisal came in low, the bank's loan to value ratio of 60% would only give you $540,000 instead of the originally planned for $600,000. That's a difference of $60,000 and you agreed to pay $1 million for the property. So now you have to figure out what you're gonna do to cover that extra $60,000. In this case, the bank can likely very easily simply just give you more money and increase their loan to value ratio to 67% of the purchase price and still give you the full $600,000 without having to majorly restructure your loan or incur many extra fees or even really significantly affect your interest rate because the bank is still only giving you 67% of the overall appraised value, which isn't pushing it too close. It's when you push your loan to value ratio upwards of 80 or 90% that you tend to run into those complications. Another example of a buyer that's more appealing to a seller, another example of a kind of buyer that is more appealing to a seller is a buyer who, even if they want to only put down 20%, they're also able to show that they have a significant amount of cash in the bank in addition to that 20% that's being put down on the property. Ultimately, they have the buffer room to deal with a low appraisal if that was to happen. In this case, if they're bidding for an apartment where there's competition across several potential buyers, the seller may choose to specifically engage with this person that has extra cash in the bank and they may also actually request that that buyer waives the appraisal contingency from their contract, which means that even if the appraisal comes in low, they can't use it as a reason to get out of the contract. This gives the seller peace of mind and the buyer can decide if they're comfortable with those terms. If they are, they would very likely beat out other competing buyers and win the deal and not have to just simply go into a bidding war where everyone is just increasing their bid to win the property. So if you are a buyer and this is something that you're comfortable with, knowing that we're in a time where the appraised values may come in low, but that the reason for that is because of a pandemic that we are expecting we will be able to get out of, that over time property values will return. If you are bidding on a property and things look like they're getting competitive and it looks like you might not win the property, if you are comfortable with that idea of waiving the appraisal contingency in an attempt to win the property because you know that you will see your return on property value later, then that actually is a solution that you can offer to the seller, even if they don't think to ask you for that first. Obviously, it's not gonna be what you offer up in your initial offer, but if you think you're at risk of losing the property to other competitive buyers, this will really beef you up if you are also getting a loan. Someone getting a loan right now is really not in the most favor with sellers because COVID is a time when everything is day by day. No one really knows what's gonna happen at any given time. If someone was to lose their job right there, the bank rejects them. So this appraisal is just one other layer of complication on top of what's already going on 
So anything that you can do to reduce the risk associated with getting a loan right now during this time will really help you. If you're a strong buyer and you have that level of confidence and you're just looking to win a property without having to overpay and engage in a bidding war, you can try and very likely have a good chance at mitigating a bidding war and simply showing a seller that you know what you're talking about and that you have this skin in the game. To give up the appraisal contingency really does show that you are serious about the property. And overall, if you understand the market and you can justify what you're paying for the property, then this might be something you really wanna think about. If you did choose to drop your appraisal contingency, you aren't giving up your mortgage contingency. So if you did have another issue with the bank that causes them to reject you, like a job loss or something else coming up that causes you to not be approved any longer, you still are able to get out of that contract and get your deposit back because you still have your mortgage contingency. You're simply just saying that you understand the current environment right now and property values might not be very clear to some appraisers. So simply by making that decision, you could very well win a property and then have it not even be an issue. I mean, the odds still are that your appraisal is not going to come in low. Another recommendation that I have as well to ensure that the appraiser that is sent to your property really knows the market and understands the market, which would allow the appraisal to come in as accurate as possible, is use a lender that is based in New York City. If you're buying in New York City, you wanna use a bank that's based here. Their appraisers are also local. They understand how to analyze these buildings and compare these buildings, and they know what's going on here. So it's just another thing to think about. And that wraps up this episode. I hope you found episode 14 really helpful and useful. I know Know that the topic of appraisals is very confusing so I wanted to try to boil this down into a short digestible video for you and I'm really hoping that the point came across I would love to hear your comments and thoughts on this as well if you ran into a similar situation I would love to hear about it I love hearing about other people's experiences as they go through the sale or purchase process because it helps me really refine my skills and know what's going on, what's worked for other people. All of that information helps me better serve my clients. On that note, if you are considering purchasing property in New York, in Manhattan or Brooklyn, I am your girl. I would love to work with you on it. So please send me a message or an email. You can also follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is downtown native. I share a lot on Instagram. I post multiple times a day and that's really your behind the scenes look at my everyday life, my more personal life and work as well I share real estate stuff as well as home stuff on there so that's where you'll get to see me outside of these videos where I'm just on my couch talking to you I also encourage you to follow my Facebook page downtown native for other content that's being posted there and I love the idea of opening a dialogue with you guys staying in touch getting to know who you are and you getting to know more about me so please never hesitate to send me a message if you have any thoughts coming out of these videos or any recommendations on things you'd like me to cover in the future I recently did a poll on social media and got a lot of cool ideas for things that you guys want to see coming up and I am actually working on creating that content. So the next video I'm going to be sharing, episode 15, is going to be about how I transitioned careers into real estate from an office salary job, how I got started in the industry, and a lot of those kinds of details, which is something that a lot of people ask for all the time. So I'm excited to share that video. That's going to be the next one up. So definitely make sure that you subscribe so you can stay posted on when I upload new videos. Thank you guys so much again for tuning into episode 14. Please also keep in mind that if you are watching the YouTube video of this episode, that there is also a podcast available of these same exact episodes. If you prefer to listen on the go where you don't have to have YouTube up on your screen, if you search Christina Kremitis in your podcast app, you will find me. The podcast is called Real Estate Investing in New York. same as what this YouTube series is called and if you are listening on the podcast right now keep in mind that there are visuals on YouTube if you'd like them this video in particular didn't have any crazy visuals that you really needed to see but there are often times where I show equations or visuals to help me get my points across so that was a lot of information I'm gonna leave it there it's been amazing to see that there are so many people who are looking to set themselves up for success
success in the future by making intelligent real estate investing decisions today. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you guys soon.